All right, chapter five, section three, two-way tables and probability. Two-way tables are basically just going to be a visual organizational structure uh, of how data is really just presented and organized. Um, and the two-way aspect of it is it's gonna be comparing two different sets of um, comparable data. Okay, so for instance, in the example that we're going to be covering, and there's really only one example we're gonna be covering for this section, um, I'll talk about uh, another illustration just briefly at the very end of this video, but the, we're gonna focus on one main uh, example, one main situation. And the case here would be um, attending or not attending a school dance that only juniors and seniors can attend. Now, obviously, lots of other sets of data could be represented here. You could have freshmen and sophomores and all those sorts of things. But essentially, we're going to be, what, what makes this a two-way table is you're going to have sets of rows, okay, here represented by juniors and seniors, and then you have sets of columns uh, here represented by their options of attending and not attending. Now, uh, again, this could represent multiple pieces of data, like there could have been more options for attending or not, which in this case, it's really like one or the other, but you could have had other options here. So this could have been like a test with multiple choice questions going sideways with your columns. And then again, here we could have had more options like freshmen and sophomores uh, in the rows section. But in this case, this one's simply juniors and seniors versus attending and not attending. And the two way aspect has to do with, again, I have this series of rows here and then I have these series of columns, okay? And so as far as the data uh, is organized, it's, it's fairly self-explanatory. Um, all the information that we were given here, now this is the solutions sheet uh, that is uploaded onto Google Classroom. This is the one I'll be referencing because um, on the actual notes, this is pretty much copy and pasted from the notes just to, to show you visually. Um, here are our notes. This is just, as you can see, we were given a couple pieces of information. Our job is to fill in the rest of the information. So that's why I'm gonna be going into the uh, solution sheets because you can see that represented. Then I don't have to draw the tables over and again. Okay, so um, the first two-way table I'm going to show you is what we call a joint frequency two-way table. And the joint frequency, um, just be aware that you're gonna be given a couple of uh, frequencies, so to speak, that you're going to be asked to solve for in your assignment. The most basic form is called a joint frequency. That's the one you're looking at right now. And these are just basically raw numbers, raw totals. Okay. Uh, I have that here in asterisk over here to the side. These are just the total amounts of the data. For instance, of the people that are attending the school dance, 42 are juniors, 77 are seniors. So that was the information that we were given at the beginning of our notes. We were also told that the total number of juniors, okay, that's in our rows column, so these, this row is all junior information. The total number of juniors in this class is 106, okay? Um, and then the total number of seniors, about 114. Okay, this is actually probably pretty similar to what it is here at Big Bear. All right, so in this case, those are the total number of juniors, Total number of juniors are attending, 42. So it's actually a pretty simple thing to figure out, well, how many are not attending? It's just the difference between 42 and 106. So I would just subtract 42 from 106 to find out that I'd have 64 of those juniors are not attending. Okay, again, a pretty simple thing to do with the joint frequency table. Essentially, we're just gonna be doing some addition or subtraction, uh, mostly subtraction in this case. Okay, had they told us, both the attending and not attending, I would simply add those together to find my total. Okay, that's the other way it would be presented. For seniors, I was told that 77 are attending of the 114, so simple subtraction would tell me that 37 are not attending of the seniors. Okay, I can also total up the columns. Okay, for instance, of the students that, of the juniors and seniors that are, that are existing in the school, I just add 106 plus 114, that tells me that there are 220 total juniors and seniors in this school. That will come in handy for our next frequency table. I'll jump to that in a minute. But I could also figure out how many total students are attending by simply adding up that column. Both juniors and seniors add together gives me 119 of them. How many are not attending? 101. And again, if I were to add both of those numbers up, the 119 and 101, I should also still get back to the 220. So it's pretty redundant, but um, all that information is represented here. So this is what we call a joint frequency table.
joint frequency, again, meaning like the raw totals of uh, whatever data is being collected. Okay, so that is what a joint frequency table is. So let's look at our next one, which we call relative frequency. <clears throat> so this next table is called relative frequency. Now it's gonna have the same information because we're still dealing with the same example. So let me just scroll this down a little bit. I'm not gonna scroll all the way down because we will be referencing some information here in this joint frequency table, the raw numbers table up here, but this is what we call relative frequency. Relative to what? Relative to the absolute total raw number of whatever data we're collecting. In this case, the total number of students, okay? Both juniors and seniors. There were 220 of them in total, okay? So in this case, I wanna figure out like what percent each of these values are compared to the 220. This is what we call a relative frequency. In other words, for instance, this square right here, this entry of 42 juniors in the school are going to attend the dance. What percent would that be of the total number of students that I'm analyzing, the juniors and seniors here? Okay, again, I'm not, I'm not representing the freshmen or sophomores here. So of the 220 that are eligible to go to this dance, we'll say, maybe it's a prom or something, of the 220 that are eligible, what percent is this 42 of that? That's what a relative frequency will, will find. So it's the percent of the eligible students. So the way I would go about solving that is I would simply take that 42 and divide by 220. It's gonna spit out a decimal, and that decimal, just to show you, okay, it's rounded to 0.19, but if I were to do 42 divided by 220, it gives me this long decimal. Uh, just be aware that in these problems on big ideas, it'll tell you what, what place to round it to. In this case, I'm rounding it to the nearest hundredth being two decimal places, okay? Uh, that comes in handy because that's also what I would be looking at for percentage, okay? So for instance, the decimal here is 0.19. If I were to convert that to a percentage, I would just simply move the decimal two places and that would turn into 19%, okay? but in decimal form, it's 0.19. And I would just go through each of the entries from my joint frequency table, my raw numbers table, and just in each case, divide it by the 220. So the 64 juniors not attending divided by 220 would be 0.29 or 29%. Okay, of the seniors that are attending, the 77, I would take that number divided by 220, I get 0.35 or 35%. The 37 not attending divided by 220 would give you 0.17 or 17%, okay? I could also go into the totals columns, okay, and row. So for all of the juniors, okay, this, by dividing that 106 by 220, it gives me 0.48 or 48%. In other words, the juniors are 48% of the, uh, junior plus senior class, whereas the seniors would be 0.52 or the 114 divided by 220 being 0.52 or 52%, which stands to reason because there are more seniors than there are juniors, so their percentage should be higher. Okay, uh, of the column totals here, again, the 119, if I were to divide that by 220, tells me 0.54 or 54%. In other words, what does that total mean? That means 54% of the junior senior class will be attending the dance, which means the balance or 101 divided by 220 or the 46%, 0.46 will not be attending. What should happen is I should add these two up and get to 1.00 or 100% of those 220. Okay, that's, so that's like a way to kind of cross check and make sure you're doing it correctly. But the simple thing to do for relative frequencies is simply divide each of these joint frequency values by 220. And even the 220 divided by 220 would give me one or the 100% of the students. All right, one more table to talk about, and that's going to be the conditional relative frequency. So it's still a relative frequency. We're still dealing with kind of percentages or decimals of the total student population in this example. But now we're going to do it with a condition, okay? And that condition depends that's why it's called a condition, okay? That condition depends, let me slide this down, on what I'm going to be comparing it to. So let me keep this relative frequency in our view right here. So the condition 
for this relative frequency table is going to depend on one of two options. Okay. It'll tell you like here, this one said to do it by row totals. So the rows of the left to right version right here. And so um, up at top, I'll, I'll, I'll show you that again in just a moment. Okay, actually I have it written right here. There were 106 total juniors at the school. There were 114 total seniors at the school. Those would be considered the row totals, okay? There were also column totals. Uh, if you If we slide back up here to our joint frequency table, you'll recall that our column totals were 119 total attending the dance, 101 not attending the dance. We're not gonna need those for this conditional frequency table because we're, we were asked to identify row totals, the left to right totals, but it could have asked for column totals, meaning the up down totals. So just be aware of that, that will be the condition. Okay, so um, based on the condition, in this case, we're looking at row totals, so we're left to right totals, which were 106 and 114. In those cases, I'm going to do the same thing that we did for our relative frequencies, where I'm going to take whatever raw number was there for the attending juniors, which in this case was 42. But instead of dividing by the 220, which was the total, raw total of students there, instead I'm going to put it by the row total, which was 106. And so 42 divided by the 106, because that was for that row's total, tells me the percentage of the juniors that are attending. 0.40 or 40%. The, the raw total for not attending was 64 juniors. I would divide by that same row total because again, that's what that row would be told that 64 over 106 would give me 0 0.60 or the remaining balance or the 60% or 0 0.60 of juniors. For seniors, instead of dividing by 106, because that row total was 114, now each of these raw totals are divided by the 114, and we get that to be 0.68 or 68%, and 0.32 or 32%. In both cases, they should total up to 100% of that row total. Okay, had they been column totals, then what would have happened is instead both of these entries would have been divided by the same number, and both of these entries would have been divided by a different number, and they would have been whatever raw totals you had from your joint frequency table. Okay, so really none of the individual operations is terribly difficult. Okay, in joint frequency, you're pretty much just doing subtraction or addition. For the relative frequency or conditional frequency, you're simply dividing each of those values by a number. Relative frequency is whatever that, that lower right-hand total was, okay, your overall total. Okay, just for relative frequencies to the all of the data uh, that's been analyzed. In conditional frequency, it will depend on what they describe. So again, this one was by row. So I wanted to know my left right totals and each of those rows was divided by its unique total number. Had it been column totals, then I would have looked at the up and down totals and then each column would have been divided by that uh, relative total. Okay, so um, just as a, an extra example that was provided here on the notes, just to talk through this briefly, um, this is another two-way table. You're gonna be getting several of these in this assignment, but here we're told a different situation. So this was a TV provider, okay, that surveyed its customers in three different cities, okay? Here are the three different cities. As I said, the number of columns and rows it, it, that doesn't matter. That the, What makes this a two-way table is just that there are rows and then there are columns. So these are the three cities, okay? Glendale, Santa Monica, Long Beach. And then the survey only comprised of two options, yes or no, whether or not they would recommend this to a friend. And so this is the data that we were given. And what's important here is that here we are given a relative frequency table. So that was the second table that we talked about um, in the previous example. This one will represent decimals that are percentages of the what would have been the lower right-hand portion, okay? So it doesn't tell us any information about how many people in total were covered. So that was what would have been a joint frequency table would have just given us raw numbers of this many people were surveyed, this many people said yes, this many people said no, those sorts of things. This is a little bit 
more of a useful table, particularly if the numbers would have been very large. It would have been um, a little overwhelming to have a bunch of numbers with like tens of thousands of people that were uh, that were surveyed. This can be a little bit more revealing based on percentages, because if I'm surveyed a million people, okay, it'll be difficult to see differences between like tens of thousands or even hundreds. Okay. So percentages will give me a little bit more concise data. So a relative frequency table is good for that. But that's what we're given here. It doesn't tell us anything about raw numbers, just simply percentages. Okay. Again, each of these decimals can be converted into a percentage. So 0.29 would be 29%. This one tends to be the trickiest one. 0 0.0 something like 0 0.05 right here would be 5% because again, the decimal still moves twice. Okay. But that's the information we're given. Right? And then we're asked a couple of questions. First off, we're given this in probability notation. What is the probability that a customer in Glendale would recommend this product? So this is what we consider a conditional probability. The operative here is that this is a customer in Glendale, meaning that I'm only focusing on this column, only on Glendale, because I'm not going to care about what happened in Santa Monica for a customer in Glendale. So I'm only going to focus on this column for this problem. And it says, what's the probability that a customer in Glendale would recommend? So I'm going to also focus on the yes, they would recommend. Okay, so how would this be calculated? I do it really quickly over here on the side. This is a probability. So my entire sample space would encompass everyone in Glendale, which makes up 0.34 is the only total that I have right here. So that's what I'm going to use. Of that 0.34, that will be my denominator. Okay. The favorable outcomes or customers in Glendale that will recommend is this 0.29. So that would be the numerator. So my probability fraction would be 0.29 over 0.34. Okay. Don't worry, you can do this on a calculator. So if I were to do 0.29 divided by 0.34, it gives me this other crazy decimal. Okay, 0.8529, yada, yada, yada. Okay, had it asked me to round to two decimal places, that's 0.85. That's what we end up getting here. Converting that into a percentage would be 85%. What does that mean? If you surveyed, a, if you were to ask a random person in Glendale, there is an 85% chance that they would recommend this product. That's what that would tell me. Using the complement space, that would also tell me that the other 15% would say, no, they wouldn't recommend it. Okay, uh, last problem here was the probability, and then here's where we're given in the nat notation. A customer who doesn't recommend lives in Long Beach. What is, what's the probability that a customer that does not recommend this product happens to live in Long Beach? So this is kind of the flip side of that previous question. So instead of looking at a column, now I'm actually gonna be looking at a row. So a customer who doesn't recommend that's going to be my sample space. So this no row, my total sample space here is 0.12 or 12% of everyone surveyed. So that will be my denominator, the 0.12, the customers who do not recommend. Living in Long Beach will end up being my favorable outcome here, or I guess unfavorable outcome, right? So of these in the row, the Long Beach entry, 0 0.04, will end up being my numerator. 0 0.04 divided by 0 0.12 will be this for probability, as shown here. And again, if I were to do that on a calculator, 0 0.04 divided by 0 0.12, it gives me this long decimal, a repeated decimal. But if it said to round to there's two decimal places, that would be 0.33. Okay. In percentage form, that would be 33%. So what, is, what does that actually mean? That of everyone that does not recommend this product, about a third of them, 33% of them, happen to live in Long Beach. Okay, that's, that's what that answer just happens to mean. Okay, so just be prepared for those kinds of questions. This is an example of conditional probability. So just you just have to pay attention to what's inside the parentheses or what, what you're being asked to analyze as far as probability goes. But this is basically two-way tables, okay? Learning how to interpret this kind of organization, basically. Um, it's pretty simple once you're able to get down to just like, again, all the information is provided that you would ever need. You just have to figure out where it would go, okay? So anyway, that is section three on two-way tables and probability.